Hey guys, so today I'm going to be doing a book review of Expert Witness by Rachel Dillon. Um, but before I get started, I just want to let you all know that if my voice sounds uh, kind of different than what it normally does because I'm not feeling well. So with that out of the way, let's get into this amazing book review because this book was was really good um, a long time I ago, but it wasn't really sticking with me so i didn't you know so i just stopped and i read other books and stuff like that but then i was just on my phone and i clicked on the uh kindle app and i was like oh, okay i'll i'll give this another try and i'm like okay dang it now i gotta remember everything that happened oh uh, and it, it was kind of hard to follow with the names and all that because you know I, i'd read a bunch of books between then and now um, but, I'm not even joking, I read all the way from chapter 6 all the way to the last chapter, which is chapter 14, in one day. So, uh, this book was, was really, really good. Um, I actually forgot it was by, uh, you know, I forgot that the book was by Rachel Dillon, um, because it didn't... I thought it was because all of her books that I've read, they were about this woman who works in law or does something with law. It doesn't necessarily have to be a lawyer. You know, she just works in law in some aspect of it. And some, and for some reason, she's targeted. And this private investigator or an FBI agent or a cop comes and you know takes it upon himself to protect her and figure out what the heck's going on um but for some reason this book was just as good if not better than the deadly proof which you all have seen me rave about on my social media accounts so anyway uh i'm going to tell you all the synopsis for it and then i'll tell you all my thoughts about the book uh Dangerous testimony. Minutes after testifying in a murder trial, sketch artist Sidney Barry is almost killed in a drive-by shooting. United States Marshal Max Preston saves her life, then whisks her away to safety. You know, walked away from God when he was a teenager uh, because his parents were kind of showing off you know, they were the showing off kind of people where, like, if, you know, when they go to church, they would show off and be like the perfect Christians, you know, and be like the perfect family. But then, of course, they'd go home and their family would be fighting and not be great Christians, not be great parents to their only son. Um, so at the age of 18, he uh, walked away. Um, and. But then he loved the Bible stories and going to church and all that. But his parents are what kind of ruined his faith in him because, you know, he, he was a kid. And it kind of set it into him at a young age. And then he just kind of walked away from God, especially after what happened with the attack while he was at war. You know, he really, you know, it's like, you know, why would God let these things happen to these people, to these people who didn't deserve this? And he was, you know, really, he had the weight of the world on his shoulders, basically. And it was, you know, really sad, you know, to read him talking to, you know, to Sydney and talking about all of this. And I'm like, oh my gosh. But Sydney has some uh, baggage of her own. She, um, you know, came from a loving home, a loving family, um, but they were, if I remember correctly, they died in a car accident, but I could be wrong about that. Like I said, chapters one through six, don't really re remember them. <laughs> Church wasn't a thing when she was a kid, you know, it, it, you know, her mom never took her to church, so she didn't, she knew about God, but she didn't believe like she in the book it, she said that she was neutral back then um but then she ended up uh getting her job that she has currently in, in the book right, right now 
Um, and she started seeing this guy. Um, I forget the guy's name, and I just finished this book two days ago. Oh my gosh. But anyway, um, she started seeing this guy, and, you know, he was all nice and, you know, sweet and all that, but then he was starting to turn to a jerk, being verbally abusive, and, you know, and, like, hitting her, literally hitting her so bad, um, until one day she decided enough was enough, and she ran, and he didn't like it. So, she took self-defense classes and, like, beginner stuff. And then she went all the way up to, like, judo and, like, bat, you know, like, black belt and stuff like that. And she, you know, she, in, the la- in, like, the fifth page, you, you see her beating some guy up. So, um, so, but, oh my gosh, it was, I felt really bad for her because, you know, she was trying to fight off these memories and stuff like that from this guy who'd beaten her for so long um and finally and then when she ran away she found god and she started going to church and her faith is what pushed her to you know put you know pushed her to try to forgive the guy who who you know who hit her but she said she told max that you know i know it's i know it's kind of wrong of me to not be able to do this but i can't i cannot forgive him and i kind of like what max said he told her that uh he said that he the guy who who hit her he isn't asking for forgiveness so you shouldn't give it to him you know and i don't remember what he said next but like it's like yeah because a guy like that he doesn't if a guy does that, he he doesn't deserve forgiveness at all. Um, there's no excusing what he did. Um, but then, of course, I'm just talking about the each individual character things, but that is just part of the story. The other part of the story is that these people, the East River Gang, um keep having hitmen stand after her and it's like blowing stuff up and you know gunfire and drive-by shootings it's like oh my gosh they can't get a break (laughs) but so and then you know of course uh max gets uh shot once in the in the arm pretty bad um but then they are trying they have the hit, the hitmen going after her because they don't want her to testify. And, you know, of course, she 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 does. Um, but there was some resistance to it. You know, and then of course she did. But Max had his best friend and who was also an FBI agent uh go in a cover to get all buddy buddy with the with uh kevin jones the like the leader of the east river gang and max and sydney were raiding um like a block away from the bank that they were going to meet at and you know like max and sydney are like kind of talking and then Sydney just for some reason just kind of like stops and like stiffens and stares straight ahead and he's like, Wait, what's wrong? And uh and she said, That's him. And he said, Yeah, that's Kevin Jones. And he said and then she said, No, the person behind him. And he looks and of course Kevin Jones's right hand man was the guy who hit Sydney all those years ago. And of course, you know, Max is, you know, kind of upset that, you know, like, angered that the guy's there. Because he saw her, like, like, physically, like, tighten and, like, tense up and, you know, it's like, start to have, like, a panic attack. Almost. Is what it seems like in the book. Um, but then it turns out that, you know, she does testify. Spoiler alert. She probably should have said that before I said that. She sorry well she does testify and little does they little does anyone know 
that Rick, the guy who hit her, has a personal revenge against her because she embarrassed him, apparently, by leaving him. And he wanted her to pay for that. So, Rick asked Max's friend, Brian, you know, who was undercover, and said that he wants him to do a favor. And he'd pay a lot of money to have this done. And Brian said, what is it? And Rick said, I want you to kill Sydney." And, oh my gosh. So, East River Gang was going after her because they didn't want her to testify. She testifies, everything's good, they think everything is alright. But little does anybody know that Rick was then started calling the shots. And it was, it, it was, it was just bad. It was really bad. Guys, I cannot tell you how much I loved this book. Um, I was gasping, crying, you know, all that stuff. And, uh, now I did read this on my Kindle app on my phone. Um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not feeling well, so, um, you know, but it was, this was an amazing book. Um, again, Rachel Dillon did an amazing job on one of her books. Like I said, this is just as good, if not better, than The Deadly Proof. That's saying something because, again, you all saw all of our stories about the book and, you know, and all that stuff. And this was just, oh my gosh. So, anyway, yeah, I would say I would give this book a 10 out of 10. And this book is completely clean. There's nothing, you know, shown. Shown as a book. It's not going to show anything. Gosh. It doesn't go into detail about anything that's, you know, bad. Um, The only thing that it does say is that he cursed. He doesn't actually say the cuss words. Uh, So that's good. Um, But this book was was 100% clean. Um, and, yeah, I would highly, highly recommend this book to anyone who loves Christian fiction books. Again, this book was just amazing. I will leave a link down in the description for both physical and, uh, Kindle books on, uh, Amazon, if you all, if you all want to get this. The Kindle version was not that much, honestly. Okay, everybody, that is it for today's, uh, book review. Next week I will also have another book review. I hope you all enjoyed this one. Please let me know what you thought in the comments down below. Uh, If you are going to read this book, you have read this book, uh, let me know your thoughts about about this and all that uh, down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about that. I love talking about books with everyone. Bye guys!